Welcome to HDTV. You're now rocking with your boy. NBA agent calls out LeBron James. Rich Paul's handling of clutch sports athletes. LeBron James proved once again he is an all-time great on the court while winning his fourth NBA title, but his work with Rich Paul in clutch sports has reportedly created problems for other athletes. Fellow NBA agents spoke, spoke anonymously about clutch sports to Ben Standing and Mike Vorkunov of The Athletic, which one saying, with one saying what clutch is doing is illegal and there are massive casualties among players. I know it's this facade that is Rich Paul, but it's really LeBron who recruits for Rich Paul, the agent said. Oh, excuse me. So it's almost like they're trying to control AAU at the NBA level. Paul has been LeBron's agent and business partner, but Clutch Sports made headlines after signing Anthony Davis when he was still on the New Orleans Pelicans in 2018. He soon forced his way out of New Orleans and was traded to the Lakers, teaming with LeBron to win the 2020 NBA title. While this has raised questions marks about tampering, there are even more issues regarding the treatment of athletic of other athletes represented by Paul. The agent explains some of the issues. That's the only disappointment is LeBron has leveraged his popularity with young players for seducing them. Cl for clutch and it's not serving all the players well but for the players that are suffering there's no repercussions nobody is criticizing what they're doing and you have to call out the union they should be meeting with rich paul saying what happened here what happened here they represent all the players they all pay the same amount for dues if rich paul were a lawyer he'd be disbarred five times but because lebron is so powerful there's no accountability the agent specifically noted the deals that were lost because Paul wasn't focused on his other clients. Ben Simmons, Darius Garland. I know this is an agent. You can't service them all at this level. The agent added you can seduce them, but you can't service them all at the level with what they say they're doing. Nerlens Noel, Norris Cole, Shabazz, Muhammad, they lost $80 million in Detroit. This is real talk. Kentavious Caldwell Pope was also mentioned as someone who was leveraged by Clutch Sports, although he was a valuable part of the Lakers championship run. Paul has a deep list of clients with several notable stars, including Simmons, John Wall, Eric Bledsoe, and Draymond Green. Well, I mean, what else is there? Like, his best friend... <laughs> His best friend is basically in charge of an agency. You know, you got to understand. LeBron, LeBron, he's basically from the get go. Let's just be honest. He's basically a guy who has manipulated the NBA, which we know, and basically has put players in position where he can either beat them or keep them out of his way from getting to where he has to get to. So the thing is with me is I'm I'm so sick and tired of this guy, man. It's like you know, like today on um, Undisputed, I mean yesterday, excuse me, today's 2 in the morning, where I'm at, sorry y'all, I'm tired, been working all day nonstop, so um, basically, like they were saying, it's like, instead of him letting the legacy unveil itself, unveil itself, he basically wants to make his own legacy and wants to make his own narrative and this is the problem and this is why he's lost more than he's won he uses his system and uses his guys and his relationships with everybody to manipulate the situation lebron basically to me is a guy who is a petulant spoiled child who gets whatever he wants 
And then when he does get it, you know, he puts it, he goes full throttle with it. Instead of just letting it happen and come out on its own, he's like, no, I got to control this. It's like, come on, dude, you ain't got to control everything. And that's why he's lost. That's why he always has trouble. To me, his game is very basic. He had to force AD out of New Orleans. That was tampering. They had dinner together before the trade deadline. The New Orleans Pelicans sat down with Anthony Davis. They talked to Anthony Davis. They basically asking him if he wanted to be here. Anthony Davis responded, yeah, he wanted to be here. But then when he met with LeBron, he met with LeBron at dinner, which it was tampering. (laughs) He basically told him to force your way out, come to LA, play with me. It's about building your legacy. This this legacy crap, which he don't care about. <laughs> All he cares about is he wants to look good, but everybody just minimizes all the failures he had throughout his career. And he's able to basically make his own team. He's able to make his team without anybody intervening. Luckily for the guy, um, Dale Demps, luckily he didn't go through with the trade. He blocked it. It cost him his job, but he blocked it, which was the smart thing to do because this is ridiculous. This dude needs all the help in the world. Now he trying to get Chris Paul. Now he trying to get Bradley Bill. You guys had a problem with Kevin Durant going to a team that already was built. They built up organically. They were going to go after KD regardless if they won the championship or not. Michael Thompson, Clay Thompson's dad, already told you what they were finna do. But yet y'all still hated on Kevin Durant because they wanted him to come. Kevin didn't beg to go there. They wanted him to come. And he went. So the problem I'm having here is that I don't know why everybody's surprised. LeBronies has been doing this forever. Look what he did in Miami. He coerced Chris Bosh and D-Wade to take less deals, which really screwed Dwayne Wade up, messed his career up financially, And then he had a chance to take the Chicago opt in. He opted out to play with you. And then you traded his ass to Miami with such a bitch move from you. Then you guys tried to throw Chris Bosh under the bus. It's like, dude, to cover for your failures. It's like, dude, come on. Like, how much more of this do we need to see? Like, I'm serious. This guy has destroyed basketball basketball was a fun sport it was competitive this guy doesn't want any competition he wants all the great players if he could have all the great players in the league on one team he would do it now the guys who lost all that money and everything i believe it because look at look at the people he's with anthony davis has a ruffles deal <laughs> Draymond Green is running around here in Converse. The shoes look like they from Walmart. For real. They look like they from Payless. <laughs> you could get them shoes from Payless if you wanted to. They're that terrible. And just his marketing is terrible. Like, I just don't see what Rich Paul has done. Like, what other athlete besides LeBron has he brought up? What other athlete has he made great or put in position to be great? I haven't seen one. I haven't seen one at all. And to me, he's going to continue signing these players and torpedoing their career. Because to me, the only reason he's getting these players is just to say, oh, look at all these players I got when they're putting all their money into LeBron. They're not focused on the other players. Anthony Davis should have won the MVP this past year. In um, the finals. And he should have been in the conversation for MVP with James Harden and Anthony Davis. Not no goddamn LeBron. LeBron ain't do nothing. 
And then people talk about his numbers. He put up 30-something, 12-9. and nine. It's always numbers with this guy. Because that's all he does is pad his stats. So then guys at the end of the game say he did this and did that. And don't get me started on the LeBrownie fans who be like, oh, he's at the most game winners. Yeah, because he's always in a dog fight when he has the better team. Why is that? Why when LeBron has the better team, he's always in a dog fight? He was in a dog fight with the Miami Heat. They should have swept the Heat. They should have swept the Heat. He he was in a dog fight. The year last year. He was so soft and trash. He quit on his team at the end of the year because he couldn't get AD. And then when it was no pressure, he trying to run down court dunking and high flying and doing all this. It's like, dog, the play, you're out the playoffs now. So now he's playing with a calm because he don't have any pressure on him. He know he could cop out by saying, oh, I had an injury, you know, you know, um, you know, my groin, my groin. <laughs> Look, man, this guy here is pathetic. He he continues to get pass after pass after pass. I've never seen this before. I've never seen an athlete get so many passes that LeBron gets. Everyone says, oh, it's always hate towards him and stuff. It's not hate towards LeBron. It's like, look, we know what you are. We know that you're a airbrush basketball player. We know that you're a fraud. We know what the league is doing to help you. Now, did the league help Michael Jordan? Did they used to give him a lot of perks and stuff? Yes, the league used to look after Michael Jordan. But Michael Jordan never used his power to this extent that LeBron is doing. Now, he's done some underhanded stuff behind closed doors. No lie. No lie for me. But... Michael Jordan would always want to take it out on the court. At the end of the day, he wanted you on the court. Michael was competitive. Michael didn't want to team up with guys. That wasn't in his DNA. Him and Kobe weren't built like that. Him and Kobe wanted to beat everybody. You teamed up with your guys in your draft class. You teamed up with um Bosch and D. Wade, who were in the top five or six picks. And you teamed up with them. And they were carrying the load. All you were doing was out there padding your stats, making your stats look good. But then you flamed out against the Mavericks. You flamed out against the Spurs where you had that mysterious cramp. I got a cramp. You had to be carried off the court because your PED must have worn off or something. Or you must have, or the heat in there messed you up. But you were the only player that had a cramp. Everybody else was fine. And then they made excuses for you that game. Isaiah Thomas coming out talking about, well, it's hard to play, you know, with cramps, you know, f you know, especially in that type of, you know, heat and everything. And the AC is all Isaiah, stop it. You were to me the greatest point guard ever. You're not my goat, but you're a lot of people's goat. Stop lying and caping and capping for this punk. He had a cramp because he was on PEDs and he wasn't hydrated enough. That's what happened. Let's call it what it is. Or we'll say allegedly on PED. Allegedly. Because we don't need them to come back and say, oh, you're slandering my name. All I'm saying is this. When are we going to put a stop to this? Like, when is, like, when is somebody going to step up? They're too scared of LeBron and his power, which he has power. LeBron, he has a lot of power. But get this. We're going to see how great you are when there's not a pandemic just to come out of nowhere and stop everybody from playing. Because to me, your problem to me has always been mental and it continues to be your problem. You're not you're not a great player, man. And I don't care. You can have all you can have all these people come to my page and they could thumbs down this, get mad about it, or oh, like, oh man, LeBron, man, why are you talking bad about Brian like that? I don't care. This guy's not a basketball player. 
This dude has to stack his deck everywhere he goes. He always has to get the best role players. He always has to get former defensive player of the years, former all-stars, former guys who used to whoop his ass. He always has to has to stack his team. He always has to get a guy with a skill set that is way better than his. He did it with D-Wade. He did it with Kyrie. And he did it now with Anthony Davis when he was in Cleveland the first go around. LeBron lost that game seven to the Celtics. LeBron was supposed to stay, come back, and go on a go on a trip to win championships. No, he copped out. He's the one who started this super team crap. And everybody's like, man, no, don't talk about that, man. Don't talk about that, man. You're going to have arguments, man. Don't talk about that. He ain't started. It was a super team with the Lakers and Magic. And that was those were not super teams. Those were teams built through the draft. They traded for Kareem Abdul-Jabbar, and then they drafted Magic Johnson. Once they got Magic, they took off, and then they drafted James Worthy, and they took off. All those guys were either drafted or traded to. Magic wasn't trying to stack a team. Magic was just trying to put his team together where they can win games but magic at the end of the day was gonna be like "Uh uh-uh man i'm taking over and he would take over he had the ball in his hands late because he knew what to do with it unlike this bum who turns the ball over like crazy he's second all time in turnovers but yet he's the greatest ever And then the games that he played in, there's no signature moment. The only signature moment this guy has is a chase down block in which J.R. Smith impeded on Andre Iguodala's way to the hole. Iggy had to adjust, so that gave him enough time to run it down and block it. Everybody who plays along this guy, they never get credit. They always get the blame or they always said to be getting better because of him. He doesn't make anybody better. I keep asking this question. If this guy is so great, why didn't he make that Lakers team last year better? Why didn't he make others better? He doesn't. He doesn't make anybody better. He makes himself better. That's it. He can't pull this guy from the end of the bench and get him to come out and ball out. Kobe's done it. Mike's done it. Magic has done it. Bird has done it. Isaiah Thomas has done it. A lot of these great players have done it. But he lacks what I keep telling everybody. He lacks that killer instinct, that putting your foot on your throat. LeBron liked to play with people. He's like a little cat with his mouse, playing with the mouse, playing with the food, instead of just devouring it like a tiger or a lion would do. But this doesn't surprise me. But the guys who lost $80 million, that's some crap. They should get with the players' union and they should press charges. Forget all that power thing. Get your money. Because when your career's over with, man, all that money going to be gone. You, you better have invested or did something smart with it or, or smart with the money you have. But you need to y'all need to take that to the union and, and eventually to the courts to get some of that money back, because that's a lot of damn money. Eighty million dollars. But um, tell me what y'all think in the comment section. Do you think the agent was right? Yeah, we know LeBron runs the um, runs clutch sports if 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 you haven't been on carcino for life's page that's where i get a lot of my information from man go subscribe to that brother then you lost because he's gonna tell you everything that's factual and he been said this he said this like three four years ago (laughs) he's been talking about this so it's not only him but a lot of people see it these guys are snakes they're, they're, they're poaching all the talent from a lot of these agents and from these teams, and they're putting them either on LeBron's team or putting them on a team that's on the East or somewhere or wherever he's positioned. They want to put the guys away from it. Montrez Harrell, man, he's with him. I told you. Harrell's a snake. He's a double agent because he was working with LeBron. He's in them. The, the trainer said it. I, I, I knew it because that team should have went further than what they did. But they didn't. 
So um, tell me in the comment section what you think about it. About Do you think the agent has a point? Do you think he's right or do you think he's wrong? And do you think we're going too hard on LeBron's blames? If we are, let us know, man. But at the end of the day, man, we're just here to give you the truth and the facts. So like, comment, subscribe, share this, hit the notification bell to select all to receive upcoming um, news um, and upcoming content. Um, this weekend, I'm going to um, put out some work. I have to work a full week next week, so I'm probably not going to get that NFL recap to you. Probably, I'll probably give you a recap um, Sunday night after the games because I got to watch this Eagles and Giants game from Thursday. I don't really want to because the NFC East is trash. But um, And I got some other stuff coming that um, that has some news to it. And thank you guys for supporting the page for real. You know, you know, it's growing slowly, but hey, got to keep that work up. And also, if you want to donate to the page, cash at me at the word welcome, the number two, and then HDII TV. Thank you for listening. We out. La boy.